In the last video, we created the design for the home screen of the app. And today, we are going to start working on the search screen. If you are new, then please consider subscribing and I hope you enjoy this video. The first thing that we will do is of course create a file and name it searchscreen.r. And then I will import the material package. After that, we will simply create a stateful widget and name it search screen. Now I will go back to main.r and create a named route. So the way it's done is you just have to specify an initial route. It's defined by this slash, which basically means that this main.r is your first page. Then after that, I will write routes and you can specify all the routes instead of this curly braces. So you just have to write slash search screen context search screen. The reason why we are using a named route is because we are going to navigate to search screen from multiple page view screens as we will show the search icon on chat list screen, contact screen and lock screen. And named routes make routing very simple. So I'll now go over to chat list screen file and scroll to this point where we have provided the search icon. And then instead of the on pressed callback, I'll simply write navigator dot push named context search screen. That's it. Now let's start working on the search screen. So I'll come inside of the search screen file. Then instead of the state class, I'll simply create a repository variable of type Firebase repository and initialize it. After that, I'll create a list of type user and name it user list. And then I'll create an empty string variable and name it query. Then I'll create a text editing controller, search controller, text editing controller. So this search controller is going to be the controller that we'll pass to our text field. Before moving any further, let me just talk a little bit about how are we going to implement the search and how are we going to be receiving the search results. The first thing that you need to know is the type of search that we are building. So in Skype, whenever you type something, you instantly receive the result. So basically there aren't any buttons which you need to press in order to trigger a search operation. And to achieve this, either you could query the database and return the results every time when the user enters a new letter, or you could just query and fetch all the users at once and save them inside of the list. After that, you won't have to make continuous network intensive requests on every keystroke. You can just query the list for some data and then that list would provide it to you. If that sounds a little complicated, don't worry, it's fairly easy. Just keep watching the video for a while. Moving on, I'll override an init state method and our first step would be to retrieve the details of the current user. So I'll write repository dot get current user dot then and instead of the then callback, I'm going to receive a Firebase user named user. After that, I'm going to receive the information of all users in the form of a list. So I'll go over to Firebase methods and I'll create a future of type list of type user and name it fetch all users. And I'm going to pass Firebase user user as an argument to this function. And I'll mark this function as a sync. After that, I'll simply create a list of type user and name it users list. Now I'll write firestore.collection users dot get documents since we'll basically query the entire users collection. Therefore, I'll write await to return all the documents asynchronously. And then we'll store the returned results inside of a query snapshot variable. Now, we simply need to loop through all the documents stored inside of the query snapshot and add them to our user list variable. So we'll simply create a for loop that runs from 0 to the length of the documents of query snapshot. Now, you might ask that why have we passed the current user inside of the method? Since we simply need to get details of all the users, then what's the use of passing the current user details as well? Well, we want to make sure that a user does not find himself in the search results. That would be awkward and useless. So we'll write if query snapshot dot documents i to target every single document one after the other depending on the value of i. Then we'll access the document id field and we'll check if it is not equal to user dot uid. The reason why we are able to compare the document id and user id is simply because of the fact that all of the document IDs inside of the user's collection is equal to the corresponding user's ID. Now, I'll come inside of this if and start adding items to the user list using the add method. Then we'll write user dot from map query snapshot document 
i dot data. So this data is nothing but a map variable. And we pass that map to the from map method, which uses the map variable to create a user. Now I'll simply return the user list. Then I'll come inside of the Firebase repository and I'll simply create a method of same name and same return type and pass in a Firebase user as an argument. Then this method returns Firebase methods dot fetch all users and pass in the user. Great. Now I'll go back to search screen and I'll access the fetch all users function from the repository and pass in the user that we received from the get current user. And then we'll receive a list of users instead of the then callback. And then I'll assign this received list to our user list variable and put this statement inside of the set state method. Great. So now I'm going to come inside of the build method and I'll return a scaffold. Then I'll set the background color to universal variables dot black color, app bar to search app bar and pass in the context. So we're going to create a custom app bar here as well. But since it is associated to this screen only, therefore we won't be creating it in the form of a widget in a separate file. So I'll create a method called search app bar and it accepts a context. According to the Skype's design, we would have to apply some gradient to our app bar. And Flutter's default app bar does not have any properties which we could use to apply a gradient. Therefore, we would need to use the gradient app bar library. Just go over to pubspec.yaml and write gradient app bar and sync the project. Once the project is synced, I'll return back to the search screen dot dot file and I'll start typing return gradient app bar. And somewhere in the middle, we'll find this suggestion. So just select it to automatically import the gradient app bar class. Now I'll set the background color start to universal variables dot gradient color start and background color end to universal variables dot gradient color end. And for the leading, I'll write icon button, icon, icon, icons dot arrow back and set the colors to colors dot white. And for the on pressed, I'll simply write navigator dot pop context. So when the leading button is pressed, we are taken back to the home screen. Then I'll set the elevation to zero. Now, if you look at Skype's search screen, you can see that the text field is right below the back button. So I'll write bottom, preferred size, preferred size, and set the size dot from height to K toolbar height plus 20. K toolbar height is a global variable which specifies the height of the toolbar. Then I'll write child, padding, padding, and set its padding to 20 from the left. Then for the child, I'll simply pass in a text field. And I'll pass search controller as a controller. And then I'll come inside of the onChanged callback and receive this value. So whenever you type something inside of the text field, this onChanged callback is triggered and we receive the current value of the text field or the current text of the text field in the form of a value. And I'll write set state query equal val. Then I'll set the cursor color to black color, autofocus to true, style text style, and I'll set the font weight to bold, color to colors.white, and font size to 35. Then for the decoration, I'll write input decoration, suffix icon, icon button, and I'll pass an icon, icons.close, and set the color to colors.white. Then for the on pressed, I'll simply write search controller dot clear. Now I'll write border, input border dot none, hint text, search, hint style, text style, font weight, font weight dot bold, set the font size to 35 and color to this specific color. Great, now we are done with the app bar. So let's take a look. I'll open the terminal and execute the flutter run command. So the app is launched and I'm gonna press on this search icon to launch the search screen. Now I'll type in something instead of the text field and I'll press on this X. So you can see that the text goes away but inside of the terminal, we find that there is some error. And the error says that the following assertion was thrown while handling a gesture. And the assertion was invalid text selection. So I looked it up and found a solution on GitHub. One of the user pointed out that enabling breakpoint on all exceptions and stepping through framework code shows exception occurred within the framework here, while some other user actually reached a solution. So the solution that worked for me was this one. I copied this line of code right here 
and I'm going to come inside this on pressed callback and I'm going to paste that line over here and just simply rename the controller to search controller. Now I'll hot restart the app again, go over to search icon and I'll type in something. After that, when I click on the cross button, you can see that the value goes away and no error is thrown. So this was something that I just wanted to talk about. Great. Now it's time for us to build our suggestions. So I'll scroll back to the scaffold body and for the body, I'll pass in a container. Then I'll set the padding symmetric horizontal 20. For the child, I'll write build suggestions and pass in the query. Then I'll create a method and name it build suggestions. And it accepts the string query. And now we need to query the list of users and build a suggestion list. So I'll create a list of type user and name it suggestion list. Then we'll check if the query is empty. If it is, then we keep the suggestion list empty as well. Or else, which means that the user has typed something in the text field. In that case, we want to scan the entire user list and return the result where the query matches either the username or the name of the target user that we are searching for. So I'll write where and it returns a user since we are iterating over a user list which is also a list of type user and it should return true either if a user's username contains query or matches with the query or if a user's name matches with the query. I'll also just write two lowercase for all these different strings that we are comparing. It's good, it's short and I know that it works. But the problem is that it's not too readable. So I'll just comment this out and paste this code. It essentially does the same thing, but it's more organized. So we have a get username variable, then query and a get name variable, all in lowercase. After that, I have created two Boolean variables, which return true if they find a match for username or name that we are looking for. And then we simply return both of them. Now at the end, I'm going to append the to list function to make it iterable instead of a list view dot builder. Then I'll return list view dot builder. Set the item count to suggestion list dot length and target an item builder, which provides us with a context and an index. Instead of the item builder, I'll create a variable called searched user of type user and initialize it. For the UID, I'll write suggestion list index. And notice that when I press dot, we can access all the member variables of the user class. So I'll write UID. For the profile photo, I'll write suggestion list index dot profile photo, name, suggestion list index dot name, username, suggestion list index dot username. Now I'll return a custom tile, set the mini to false, uh, leave the on tap empty. For the leading, I'm gonna pass circle avatar, background image, network image, searched user dot profile photo. Then for the background color, I'll write colors dot gray. For the title, I'll write text, search user dot username and give it some style. For the subtitle, I'll write text, search user dot name, style, text style, color. And for the color, I'll simply pass universal variables dot gray color. That's it. Now I'm going to head over to the Firebase console and create a new document inside of the user's collection. So I'll simply click on the auto ID for the document ID. Then I'll give it an email, a name, a profile photo, set the state to null, status to null as well. And for the UID, I'll simply copy the document ID and paste it here. And then just pass in some username. Now I'll head back to the app itself, go over to search screen and look wise, we've almost completely cloned the Skype's UI. Let me just open the search screen from the Skype itself. Notice how similar both of those screens look. Now I'm going to search for the user that I just created. And there we go. It fetches the user just like we wanted. And if I try to enter my own name, nothing happens. And we can search our user by name and username both. I tried this by creating about a thousand users and concluded that this approach is quite reliable. Great. So another screen is finally completed in this project. In the next one, I'll probably try to create either the other two screens for the page view or maybe we'll start off with messaging. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and the source code for this video is present in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.